Get ready to enter the Thrive Time Show. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, and we'll show you how to get here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're here. We started from the bottom, now we're on the top. Teaching you the systems to get what we got. Colin Dixon's on the hooks. I break down the books. Z's bringing some wisdom and the good looks. As the father of five, that's why I'm a dive. So if you see my wife and kids, please tell them hi. It's a C and Z up on your radio. And now three, two, one, here we go. We started from the bottom, now we here. All right, Thrivers, next step we need to do. Okay, this is step number two. Define what makes you happy and what irritates you. You have to define your ideal schedule and life rhythm. Define what matters. What? Define what makes you happy and what irritates you? So let me just make a list of stuff that irritates me so I can kind of help you. But I want you to make a list of what irritates you. Well, I'm making my list. You make your list. So here we go. Bruce, make your list. Here we go. So one. I get irritated with stupid meetings, talking to people who talk in circles. That's one. I'm writing it down. So I can't stand being in meetings I don't need to be in with people who talk in circles. Okay, so circle, circle talk. Write down, go ahead and write down your own list here. Second thing, I hate it when I'm around people who want to talk about politics with no solutions. Makes me crazy. Maybe not you. I can't stand talking to woo, woo spiritual people who are like, well, maybe it's God's will that for me to be successful and maybe it's a unicorn that's going to help me. And, you know, spiritually, if you look at the rock pattern, it looks like I'm on the verge of building a business. I hate that stuff. Okay. I can't stand people who just want to talk about other people and not focus on getting stuff done. I don't understand someone's upset. I don't understand why you'd watch curling. I don't like to watch the Winter Olympics. I don't like to make your own list, okay? What are the things that irritate you and what are the things that make you happy? So let me make a list of what makes me happy. I love being in my man cave. Oh, I love, it smells like pinion wood in there. There's barn wood everywhere. At some point, I'll show it to you. We got Edison bulbs. I can smell the man cave now. I love Tom Brady. I love watching the Patriots. Even though they're trying to deflate the ball, they're trying to do various things to win the game. Just calm down. The point is, I love their pursuit of excellence. Um, I love talking about how to grow a business. I love proactivity. I love talking to somebody who's wanting to grow their you know, business. I love mentoring people who are just in the toilet of life. They've followed, they've checked all the boxes, they've done everything, and they need a little help. I love that because it's fun to see their success happen. I love focusing on results. I love comedy. I love to laugh. I love epic movies. On the hate side, I love those movies that are super deep and I can't understand them. Like some of you watching this right now, you love The Matrix. I have no idea what that movie's about. I, I've, I've watched it. We watched, There's a movie called Game of Spies recently with Tom Hanks. And that movie's going on and my wife loves it. It's a good movie. People, you know, people have celebrated Tom Hanks. He's a good guy. People celebrate the movie and his acting skills. And I'm going, I don't know what's going on. And I, I'm probably the dumbest guy in the world. But th- I'm just making a list of what I like and what I don't like, what makes me happy, and what irritates me. Make a list. Brucey, make that list. We're giving you time here. Make a list. What irritates you, and what makes you happy? So what I'm going to do is I don't want to push my goals on you, because if I push my goals on you, I'm a bad guy. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, what what makes you happy? Let me give you some examples, though, okay? Mother Teresa, have you ever heard her? I've never heard of Mother Teresa at all. I don't know who that is. Well, let me read it to you. She says, spread love everywhere you go. Let no one ever come to you without leaving happier. That's her goal. Mother Teresa. She's she's moved on. But who's Mother Teresa? She's like probably the most legendary philanthropist of, of my time. I mean, this is a this is that's her goal. Is it your goal? It's not my goal. It's her goal. Okay, another one. Michael jo- this is the quote from Russell Simmons. Russell Simmons. Who's Russell Simmons? He started Jet Def Jam. He had a speech impediment. I had a speech impediment as well. I used to stutter, so I, I empathize with him. But he uh, had a speech impediment. He started Def Jam, which is like the first rap music company uh, ever that was successful in the record industry. And some people go, rap music is what's killing pe- Kids today are terrible because of rap music. Maybe you just put on earmuffs and don't listen to this quote, but I'm going to read it to you. He says, the goal is to be able to live your life the way Michael Jordan played basketball. Or Marvin Gaye sang a song. To be able to feel the way you feel when you laugh at a joke, but to feel that way all the time. 
Let I me mean, repeat it because I feel like the profundity is just now seeping into your, it's seeping into your core. And some of you don't like rap music, so you need a different quote. It's okay. He says, the goal is to be able to live your life the way Michael Jordan played basketball or Marvin Gaye sang a song, but to be able to feel that way, the way you feel when you, I'm sorry, but to be able to feel the way you feel when you laugh at a joke, but to feel that way all the time. One more time because I struggle with reading the, the American uh, English. Okay, he says, the, the goal is to be able to live your life the way Michael Jordan played basketball or Marvin Gaye sang a song. To be able to feel the way you feel when you laugh at a joke, but to feel that way all the time. Someone says, that seems selfish. It seems like all you're talking about is yourself. Taking selfies, talking about yourself. You're just getting your cell phone out. Yourself. You, see I did this? you, you kind of see what I did right there? I took the word cell phone and I kind of worked it where it made the word self. But you take your cell phone out and all you're doing is you're taking selfies and you're taking pictures of yourself and you're talking about yourself and you're reading self-improvement and all you care about is yourself. Well, you probably should because no one else does. So the next notable quotable says here, the achievement of your happiness is the only moral purpose of your life. And that happiness, not pain or mindless self-indulgence, is the proof of your moral of your moral integrity, since it is the proof and the result of your loyalty to the achievement of your values. That's by our good friend, who's written the book Atlas Shrugged. She's written the Fountainhead, the Anthem. What am I saying? What makes you happy? Ask yourself. What is it? Put it on your freaking list tonight. I love grilling. You can probably tell. I love grilling. Love grilling. Love it. Love grilling meat. Kind of into lamb right now. Don't know what's going on. It's kind of weird. But I love grilling. And so, like, I have to do that every week or I get a little frustrated. I love reading self-help books. I love making money. I love, I told you guys, I love Tom Brady. Anytime there's Tom Brady news. So last night, he sent out a call to to Gronkowski. oh and then, Tom, and then Gronkowski shit up is awesome. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just YouTube it. Okay, I, I love mentoring people who are struggling. I love reading epic books, watching epic movies. I can't stand political conversations that at no point have a point. I hate woo-woo. I don't want to go to your spiritual conference to, let's walk on rocks together and discover the magic that lies within our bodies and our mind. I don't get it. I just... No, thank you. But I don't. I don't get the Matrix. I don't really get movies with big plots. My wife goes, "You don't get movies with any plots." That's true. But the thing is, is that I know what makes me happy. I know what doesn't. I'm asking you right now, what makes you happy and what makes you not happy? Okay. Now I'm going to show you some footage right now. Some things that make me happy. I love my family. I love spending time with my kids. I have five kids. They're awesome. I love spending time with them. And frankly, I don't want to spend as much time with your kids. I want to spend time with my kids. I have five kids. I want to spend time with my kids, right? I love our chickens. We've got 38 chickens. They're organic. They're, you know, free range. We're, we're I don't know what we're doing. We're like, we're like feeding them like, you know, crystals from heaven. We're like, we're giving them like organic. We're like feeding them money. We're just like, here's a gold coin that's made naturally. Eat this. Here's a, but our chickens are free range. Okay. I love that whole deal. I love pinion wood, the smell of pinion wood. I love Justin Timberlake's 2020 album. I love album two and I love album one. I love it. Okay. I also love the American flag. I love America. I love the, I, I love, and if you're watching this, because we have a lot of thrivers in 40 some other countries, I realize 44 people are like, shut up. Stop talking about it. I love that America has set the standard for freedom. Someone living right now in Ireland is like, well, technically we're actually more free. Let's stop. The point is, I love the people of the military. I love the fact that people serve to save our country, to protect our country. I love that we told our good friends in England to do anatomically impossible things to themselves. We threw the tea into the, the, to the harbor and we started a country. I love that stuff. I'm asking you, what do you love to do? Let me tell you what you want to do, but what do you love to do? What makes you happy? What irritates you? Take notes. Step three, you want to define what you are willing to do to achieve your ideal lifestyle and schedule. So go ahead. It's okay. You don't need me. Go ahead and make a list. Make a list of all the things you're willing to do. You remember that Meatloaf song? Bruce, do you remember Meatloaf? Bruce, did you watch a lot of meat? Bruce is like, I don't know. I mean, Bruce, quit denying it. I know you have the whole album. You got the greatest hits. But he's like, and I would do anything for love. But I won't do who that. And we're all going, what would you not do? But I won't do who that. I would do anything for love, anything you've been dreaming of. But I just won't. I mean, 
What is that? I don't know. I'm asking you right now. Write down what it is that you're not willing to do. I'm going to give you some stuff I won't do. I will not, check it out, check it, check it, check it, check it out. I will not miss my family time that I have scheduled with my kids and my wife. I won't do it. I will travel right now for speaking events, but I don't like it. I hate, When I travel, you know how they're like, um, folks, it's welcome to the, I'm always getting the red-eye flight because it's cheaper and I like to be on the red-eye flight. Less people are on the plane. Like, All right, folks, it's the time is 5.50. We're on Southwest Airlines. We're going to be heading to LaGuardia Airport. We're going to have the service coming by in 30 minutes at an elevation of 15,000 feet. If you're uh, looking for an adult beverage, we have those available. Everyone's like, who wants an adult beverage at five in the morning? I mean, I do. I'm afraid of flying. It freaks me out, okay? But I'm, I'm willing to do it right now. Probably won't be willing to do it in the future. But what am I willing to do? I'm willing to work 80 hours a week to have success. What? Thrivers, I wake up most days at 3 or 4 in the morning, and I'm totally willing to work until 5, 5 or 5.30. So that, that is, let's do 3 to 5. What's that? 12 hours, 14 hours, 14 hours a day. Five days a week, what does that come out to? And I also do work on Saturdays. I do some planning on Saturdays. I'm willing to do, those are my limits. Those are my boundaries. Some people are like, hey, you know, I'm willing to work 40 hours a week. Somebody says, I'm just not willing to be uncomfortable. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to totally step out of my comfort zone to be successful. I'm willing to do, but you got to define your own boundaries because I can't put those on you. But it's so important that you define what you're willing to do in order to achieve success. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a notable quotable here, okay? This is from our main man, Tim Ferriss. He says, being busy is a form of laziness, lazy thinking and indiscriminate action. What he's talking about is if you're super, super, super busy, but you're not willing to invest the time needed every day to to plan out your schedule, to block out that time, you're not going to be successful. And you're actually kind of lazy if all you want to do is stay busy, but never sit down and think about what you need to be doing. That is, that's kind of an uncomfortable quote. I'm sure it doesn't affect you. So next notable quotable, okay? This is a notable quote. This is from Lou Holtz. Who's Lou Holtz? Lou Holtz. Lou Holtz is one of the most legendary football, American football coaches of all time. And here's his quote. He says, winners embrace hard work. They love the discipline of it, the trade-off they're making to win. Losers, on the other hand, losers? Losers? Did he say losers? Losers, on the other hand, see it as punishment. And that's the difference. So Lou Holtz is willing to sacrifice, be very self-disciplined. I would argue you need to be as well if you want to have success. Now, the next notable quote, this is from Seth Godin. Seth Godin, marketing wizard. This guy's best-selling author. Awesome. Love his, love his book, Purple Cow. Love his other books too. But he says, the art of good decision-making is looking forward to and celebrating the, tra- the trade-offs, not pretending they don't exist. So let me do an example. We today, Thrivers, we're here um, recording a training session with you. So I'm not at the hospital right now with my dad. Uh, Being blunt, uh, my dad, he has ALS, which is uh, um, brutal. It's Lou Gehrig's disease. So your your body um, slowly shuts off one part of itself at a time. And uh, he fell, so he broke his shoulder on Thursday. So being here with you right now means I can't be with my dad. And so I had to decide, are you worth it? You know, like we, we, someone watching this has to deal with the same thing. You're going, Hey, I've got a sick child. I have my own health. I have a problem with, I have my husband's health. I've got problems with this or that, but it's trade-offs. And I had to trade. I decide to, to be physically and mentally present with you. I could no longer be with him today at this time. And so we have to know those trade-offs eyes wide open. We can't go in going, I don't want to make any trade-offs at all, but I want to be successful. I'm going to read this quote to you, okay? It says, when you dance, your purpose is not to get to a certain place on the dance floor, white people. White people. White people, we, we need to talk because we all have the same problem. When we dance, we're like, all right, step one, step two, where do we need to get to on the dance floor? What's our, I mean, tell me where, I, that's why line dancing for white people, you know, like the achy, breaky heart. Do you guys ever watch the achy, breaky heart? And is it, is it difficult for you to watch somebody do boot scoot and boogie where it's like they're trying to get to a specific place? It, did you not, Nathan, do you not feel that way? Bruce, do you not feel that way? Where you're watching, you watch white people dance and you're like, 
don't tell my heart my achy break and they're walking like they're like line dancing is so there's no soul to it it's like it's like boot scoot and boogie like, heel toe do sit do come on baby let's go boot scoot everyone's like taking like specific steps there's no soul to it uncool so i'm gonna read this quote again let me try and again if you're used to line dancing at a at a, at a western bar where you're like these are the moves and this is how i did heel toe do sit do come on baby and you're just like in your mind grinding trying to memorize all the steps this this doesn't pertain to you but this is what he says when you dance your purpose is not to get to a certain place on the dance floor it is to enjoy each step along the way so go to a wedding look at everybody who's not white watch them dance they're bringing some soul i was at a i was at a wedding and they were playing step in the name of love i used to be a dj for years you know i was a disc jockey entertainer you know so they're playing step in the name of love step step side to side you know, to break it back, do do do. You know, step in the. And it, it's R. Kelly, okay? And some of you go, R. Kelly, he's a bad person. But call, stop judging him. I don't know. Maybe he is, maybe he's not. But the point is, he's doing step in the name of love. And you, when you watch people that are dancing who are, are really dancing and romancing, it's a different thing. But this is what he says we, when you dance, your purpose is not to get to a certain place on the dance floor, it's to enjoy each step along the way. What am I talking about? You've got to enjoy your freaking life. You only live one time. You got to enjoy that stuff. I mean, you're trying to, you know, we're trying to get through this game of life and have a good time along the way. It can't be like a deal where you're like, I will turn off all joy until I have success. Until I have success, I'm going to turn off all joy. I will not ever watch Tom Brady. I will not ever grill food. I will not ever do anything awesome. I will just turn off myself. I will whip myself with a whip until I have success to punish myself for not having success. That's what I'm going to do. That's not healthy. You know, so you got, I'm just telling you, define what makes you happy. Define what doesn't. And then guess what? Schedule it. So you what? Schedule it. So put it on your schedule to watch Monday Night Football. Put it on your schedule to take your wife on a date. Put it on your schedule to take your husband on a date. Put it on your schedule to enjoy life. Whatever it is you enjoy, you've got to do it. You have to do it. All right? All right. Here we go. This is the part where it starts to get a little not fun. All right? Step four. Define what you are willing to say no to. Purchases, habits, Etc. Now I'm sure you're watching and you're not buying lottery tickets. I'm sure you're not that guy. I'm I, other people are that guy. It's not you. I'm sure you're watching and you you definitely don't smoke like a chimney. If you watch this, you're like, well, hey, did he say that? I mean, if you're starting to sound like Joan Rivers and you smoke like a pack a day, maybe this is for you. But I'm sure we don't have thrivers who have habits. I mean, none of us have habits, right? None of us are like. I play fantasy football. I sign up, but I spend like no more than eighteen thousand a season. I mean, is that normal? I mean, is that normal? You know, somebody's somebody's saying to yourself, "I only really try to invest in fantasy football when I know it's a certain thing." But last year was a fluke, you know, because Cam Newton was gonna win, and then it was like, you know, it's just crazy. I mean, we all have like, I mean, we have some sort of vice, some sort of habit. Just stop it, okay? We got to define what we're willing to say no to, purchases and habits, in order to get where we want to go. So here is a little bit of a notable, quotable. Okay, here we go. It says, freedom means you are unobstructed in your li- in living your life as you choose. Anything less is a form of slavery. Wayne Dyer. He's a best-selling author. What are we talking about? If you buy something, you have a what? Responsibility. If you buy something, you have a what? Responsibility. To do some what on it? Maintenance. If you have a relationship, you have to do some what on it? maintenance if you do anything you have to have some maintenance to keep it in order working in working order to keep it functioning to keep the relationship healthy to so we got to quit running around trying to acquire stuff and we got to start saying no to things that don't matter are you getting me i had a seared tuna last night i love seared tuna it's great people say they come to my house a lot of times i live kind of in the forest kind of like yoda or something and people say how come you don't have that big house anymore? Because it's slavery. I'm paying a bill on a house so I can live in a neighbor, uh, live in a neighborhood where I've got to run around playing the. And well, I'm sure they'll edit it, but I got basically. If I live in a neighborhood, my entire game, my entire goal is to run around trying to keep everybody happy. So my neighbor comes over, 
Hey, what's going on? I noticed your car was parked in the driveway a little bit past the line. I wanted to see if we could move that. And I'm like, okay, neighbor, thanks a lot. And they're like, knock, knock. Are you kidding me? Na- neighbor. Hi, um, Clay, I wanted to see, we're having a neighborhood HOA, um, Homeowners Association, get together. And I wanted to know you, what you were going to bring. I hadn't seen a response on the email. Um, I want to know if you are going to bring hot dogs or brats. We'd requested hot dogs and brats. I don't care at all. I don't care about your freaking neighborhood. I don't care about going to your freaking HOA parties. I don't care about, you know, I mean, we had one neighbor, and I'm not kidding. True story. Neighbor says, um, are you a disc jockey? I said, well, I was a disc jockey. Um, okay. And he just gives me that look of like the eye of the tiger like, hmm. He won't let my kids hang out with him because I'm a formal di- for former disc jockey and he is concerned that we're bad people. It's fine. It's his decision. But freak the neighborhood. I hate neighborhoods. Like I don't want to be a part of a neighborhood. So I'm asking you right now, what is it? that you're going to say no to. I had to say no to the big house and the gate, you know, the gate where you go to the neighborhood and you're like, please put in your punch code. And you go, boop, 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 boop. And they go, Aah. and the door opens, the gate opens slowly. Aah. And then you pull up and you park your car because you're awesome. You park your car, you're, you know, you pull in your, you know, you drop, you park in your driveway. You hit your garage door opener. The door opens. You're surrounded by other neighbors. Look, all of us have a million dollar house. Look, we all have a half million dollar house. We all are working together. I just, I, I hate that stuff. Maybe you want to live in a neighborhood. That's fine. But I'm just saying, I had to say no to the house that I, you know, used to have to say yes to the lifestyle that I wanted. To enjoy life, you don't need fancy nonsense, but you do need to control your time and realize that most things just aren't as serious as you make them out to be. We got to control our time. You buy a house, you got to go to the HOA meeting, right? You send your kids to a certain school, you need to show up at all the meetings. You send your kids to a certain sport, you got to go to all the meetings. Figure out what you want your life to look like, design that, and then do it. But quit committing to things and then having this life of obligation where we're doing stuff we don't want to do. So I want to give you some examples of some things that I'm willing to say no to. I told you I'm willing to say no to the bigger house, to say yes to the more time freedom. Um, I totally say no to social media. So uh, we had the other day on Thrive, you know, somebody went up there and wrote something hateful about me. Like, you know, I don't remember what it was, but let's just say it was this. Was He hates people. All he does is he hates people and he cares about business and you know what? I don't care. I don't even go on social media. So people say to me like, you know, hey, you know, you fired somebody a few weeks ago and they wrote up. I mean, literally, I got a call. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, my mom's not from New York or anything, but this is kind of how I imagine it. You know, she's calling, boop, 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 boop. Go, honey, it looks like somebody has written a horrible comment about yourself on your Facebook. You should probably take that off, baby. They someone so so. They said you fired the daughter. You, you fired the daughter, and their daughter was looking for a job and needs this job. Oh no! What are you gonna do? What I do is I don't even care. You know, like. I don't even care. I don't mess with Facebook. I don't mess with LinkedIn. I don't mess with answering my mail if I'm not expecting something. I don't mess with HOAs. I don't, I, you know, my kid, my son played hockey. I'm not going to argue with the ref. I'm not going to, I just, you know what I'm saying? Figure out what, it, you got to say no to some stuff. Other stuff I say no to. I really don't watch TV at all. Um, I watch the debates because I kind of, it's kind of like my sport. Um, I watch professional sporting events. That's it. I don't remember the last time I watched a show. I said no to the news about a decade ago. Uh, Bruce, I'm sure you're not saying no to the news, but I said no to the news. I'm like, I'm done. So now if there's like, this is this is, this is is the review of the news, by the way. I want to give you the news for the next five years. And Bruce, if I'm missing something, you just kind of let me know, okay? I'm, I, Bruce is in the studio right now, and I mess with Bruce because he, I need some human interaction here, and Bruce is here. So Bruce, you tell me if I'm wrong on this, okay? So here's the nightly news. It's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Looks like the weather here in Tulsa is a little bit. Sorry, uh, sorry, Jeff. Looks like the weather here on I-44. It looks like there's a little bit of a potential tornadic activity. Uh, uh, the wind, very windy. Back to you. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, looks here like there was a shooting in North Tulsa today. Uh, someone was injured very, very badly. Not quite sure status of. Looks like Donald Trump said something that offended. Looks like Bernie Sanders said it. Looks like there's an affair. Looks like there's a scandal. Looks like Kim Kardashian was naked. Looks like Justin Bieber just had new tattoo. Sex. 
ah, scandal, ah, pff, ah. That's the news. I don't care at all, ever, about the news. So I turn that crap off because I'm done with it. I just don't care. It's not a highlight of my life. It's not something I care about. I'm just done with it. I'm saying no to it. Other stuff. Let me just, let me, Seth Godin best-selling author. I'm giving you these notable quotes. I'm giving you a fire hose of knowledge to prove what I'm saying so you can change your life, change your default, say no to stuff. The art of good decision-making making is looking forward to and celebrating the trade-offs, not pretending they don't exist. We talked about that, Thrivers. Think about this, though. He's talking about celebrating those trade-offs. you got to say no. you got to be excited. you got to go, I'm turning off the TV. I'm turn-. Also, Thrivers, I turned off idiots idiots yeah so like people that call me and give me random random opinions about crap that i didn't ask them about who don't know what they're talking about i don't care if you're physically fit and you want to give me fitness tips and i ask for them i want to hear them but if you're going to run around going um one thing i think you might want to consider is something i thought about i just you know i mean people walk up to me is there, in the, is there any way in the in the bar in the office that we could have more Be- beverage variety. I just don't care. I don't care. I'm saying no to these things. I'm not going to have a meeting about, you know, your desire for me to have more organic beverages in our bar in our office, okay? I'm saying yes to what matters to who? To me. Why? Because nobody else cares. So I'm asking yourself right now as an action step, write down, type it in the notes section, what are all of the things that you are willing to say no to? Purchases, habits, idiots, shows, commitments, blow them up. Then you guys saw it. The door, we have a security company. It's supposed to keep our doors locked. And does the card, you know, the swipe card where you go boop, and it's supposed to let you in the building? It's not working right now, right? So I make the executive decision to put a bunch of crap in front of the door and lock it permanently until we get it fixed. I can't even go on to tell you how many people have come to me and said, how come you're blocking the door? It's like it's so sunny outside. I just feel like... Guys, if you run around all day, the key to being unhappy is to try to make everyone happy. Does that make sense? If my whole goal is to run around going, oh, well, thanks for pointing that out. I should get a different kind of beverage. I'll go ahead and just think about my day today if I did that. Okay, so I get a white Gatorade for you. Okay. Hey, you're not meeting me for lunch. I thought you said you're out of town. Wait a minute. I'll come over there. Let's second. Get- let's meet for lunch. Okay, let's do that. Hey, how come the doors are blocked? I thought they should be open. You know, it's such a nice day. Okay, I guess let's open the door. Okay, anything else? So we go through this. Oh, yeah, I should get a Prius. Okay, get the Prius. Need to make sure. And then I guess give my car to Goodwill and just stand on the side of the road and give money to homeless people. Okay, so hand money to homeless people. Okay, so let's think about this would be my week. This would be my week. Eric, this would be what I'd be doing this week. I would do this all week if I did this. One, I would go to the store today and I'd buy white Gatorades. Then when I finished that, I would go out to lunch with this, I hate to use the word, but it needs to be said, random ass guy who wants me to take him to lunch. I'd be taking that guy to lunch, which means I couldn't be with my father today at the hospital. Then I would be keeping the door open for vagabonds, criminals, and just idiots to come in the office and rape and pillage our office. Then I would be driving a little Prius going, I can't fit in the car, but it's 700 miles a gallon. Awesome. Woohoo. Then I would be handing out money, homeless, you know, money to homeless people in various charities and not driving a Mercedes. Screw that. So I'm telling you, I don't feel bad then I'm happier than the average person. So let's go back to our statistics, and then we'll let you guys kind of marinate on that, okay? So 57% of Americans say the American dream is not possible. I say it's possible. It is possible. I live it. I do it. I've done it. Boom. Trap the mic. 52% of people say, I'm not happy at work. I love work. I love 98% of my work day. I love this moment. This moment right now with Brucey Bruce and Eric and Nathan. The guys. I love it. I love being here with you. Well, how come you're not doing more trainings on Thrive right now about, you know, the election? Because we're not a political website. I mean, if I make a training video, this is to help you. It's every video, like a fifth of them are designed to help you. And the other fifth are designed to help someone else and someone else. But we can't appeal to every single person about every single thing. But the key is once you start to have success, you cannot make everybody happy. That's the key to not having success. So step number... 15, okay? Don't feel bad that you are happier than everybody else because people will try to steal your joy. Here's the deal. People may try to take your time, 
They may try to take your joy, but don't let them. You only live one time. Life is not a dress rehearsal. You now know the 15 secrets to success, but it, but Napoleon Hill says that action is the real measure of intelligence. Thomas Edison says that vision without execution is hallucination. My friend, you have got to get out there and follow through because people are going to know you based on what you do, based on not, not based on what you know. It's based on what you do. All right? So let's make this year the best year ever. Let's make this week. How about this? Let's make today. Well, because you're probably watching this, you know, during the middle of your day. Let's make tomorrow, starting tomorrow morning, okay? Let's get the let's make tomorrow the first day we do our meta time. Let's block out that time. Let's schedule stuff for family, faith, finance, friendship, right? Family, faith, finance, friendship, fitness. Let's block out that time for faith, family, finance, friendship, fitness. Let's block out that time. Let's make a master to-do list. Let's schedule all those items. Let's have one calendar. Let's get our email down to, back down to zero. And let's go out there and let's win. Let's, let, let's, let's make every day a win. Let's, 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 let's revere the gift that is today. Let's make today awesome. You deserve it. Let's make it happen. The number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. We are Jared and Jennifer Johnson. We own Platinum Pest and Lawn and are located in Owasso, Oklahoma. And we have been working with Thrive for business coaching for almost a year now. Yeah, so so what we wanna do is we wanna share some wins with you guys uh, that, that we've had by working with Thrive. Um, first of all, um, we're on the top page of Google now, okay? Um, I just wanna let you know what type of accomplishment this is. Our competition, Orkin, Terminex, they're both $1.3 billion companies. They both have two to 3,000 pages of content um, attached to their website. So to basically go from uh, virtually non-existent on Google to up on the top page is, is really saying something. Um, but that's come by being uh, diligent to the systems that, that Thrive has, um, by, be, by uh, being consistent and diligent on, on doing podcasts um, and staying on top of those podcasts um, to really help uh, with, with getting up on, on uh, what they're listing and ranking there with Google. And also, we've been um, trying to get Google reviews, you know, asking our customers for reviews. And now we're the highest rated and most reviewed pest and lawn company in the Tulsa area. And that's really helped with our conversion rate. And the number of new customers that we've had is up 411% over last year. Wait, say, say that again. How much are we up? 411%. Okay, so 411% um, we're up with, with our new customers. Amazing. Right. right. So not only do we have more customers calling in, we're able to close those deals at a much higher rate than we were before. Right now, our closing rate is about 85%, and that's largely uh, due to, uh, first of all, like our Google reviews that we've gotten. People really see that our customers are happy, but also we have a script that we follow. And so when customers call in, they get all the information that they need. Uh, that script has been refined time and time again. Uh, it wasn't a one and done deal. We it was a system that we that we followed with Thrive in in the refining process, and that has obviously um, the 411 percent shows that 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 system works. Yeah. So here's a big one for you. So last week alone, our booking percentage was 91 percent. We actually booked more deals, more new customers last year than we did the first five months. Or I'm sorry, the first we, we booked more deals last week than we did the first five months of last year from before we we, we worked with Thrive. So again, we booked more deals last week than the first five months of last year. And it's incredible. But, but the reason why we have that success is by implementing uh, the systems that, that Thrive has taught us and, and, and helped us out with. So. Some of those systems that we've implemented are group interviews. That way we've really been able to uh, come up with a really great team. Um, we've created and implemented checklists. That way everything um, gets done and it gets done right. Uh, we, it creates accountability. Uh, we're able to make sure that everything uh, gets done properly, both out in the field and also in our office. Um, and also doing the podcast, like Jared had mentioned, that has really, really contributed to our success. But that, like you said, the diligence and um, consistency and doing those in that system has really, um, really been a, a big blessing in our lives. And also, um, you know, it's really shown that we've gotten the success from following those systems. Yeah. So before working with Thrive, uh, we were basically stuck. Um, really no new growth um, w with our with our business um, and we were, we were in a rut and we didn't know oh, sorry. No the last three years our customer base had pretty much stayed the same we weren't shrinking but we weren't really growing either yeah and so we didn't we didn't really know where to go what to do uh, how to get out of this rut that we're in um, but Thrive helped us with that you know they, they implemented those systems that they taught us those systems they taught us the knowledge that we needed um, in order to succeed 
Now it's been a grind. Absolutely, it's been a grind this last year. Um, but we're but we're getting those fruits uh, from from that hard work and, and the diligent effort that, that we're able to put into it. Um, so again, we were in a rut. Thrive helped us get out of that rut. Um, and uh, and if you're thinking about um, working with, with, with Thrive, quit thinking about it and just do it. Um, do the action, um, and you'll get the results. It, it will take hard work and discipline, um, but but uh, but that's what it's going to take in order to in order to, to really succeed. So uh, we just want to give a big shout out to Thrive, a big thank you out there to, to Thrive. We wouldn't be where we at, where we're at now um, without their help. Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Moore. I'm a pediatric dentist. Through our new digital marketing plan, we have seen a market increase in the number of new patients that we're seeing every month, year over year. One month, for example, we went from 110 new patients the previous year to over 180 new patients um, in the same month. And overall, our average is running about 40 to 42 percent increase month over month, year over year. The group of people required to implement our new digital marketing plan is immense, starting with a business coach, videographers, photographers, web designers. Back when I graduated dental school in 1985, nobody advertised. The only marketing that was ethically allowed in everybody's eyes was mouth-to-mouth -mouth marketing. By choosing to use the services, you're choosing to use a proof and turnkey marketing and coaching system that will grow your practice and get you the results that you are looking for. I went to the University of Oklahoma College of Dentistry, graduated in 1983, and then I did my pediatric dental residency at Baylor College of Dentistry from 1983 to 1985. Hello, my name is Charles Kolaw with Kolaw Fitness. Uh, today I want to tell you a little bit about Clay Clark and how I know Clay Clark. Clay Clark has been my business coach since 2017. He's helped us grow from two locations to now six locations. We're planning to do seven locations in seven years and then franchise. And Clay has done a great job of helping us navigate anything that has to do with like running the business, building the systems, the checklists, the workflows, the audits, um, how to, how to um, navigate lease agreements, how to uh, buy property, um, how to uh, work with brokers and builders. This guy is just amazing. He's, he's This kind of guy has worked in every single industry. He's written books with like Lee Crockerell, head of Disney with the 40,000 cast members. Um, he's friends with like Mike Lindell. Um, he does Reawaken America tours where he does these tours all across the country where 10,000 or more people show up to some of these tours. On the day-to-day, -day, he does anywhere from uh, about 160 companies. He's at the top. He has a team of uh, business coaches, videographers, and graphic designers and web developers, and they run 160 companies every single week. So think of this guy with a team of business coaches running 160 companies. So in the weekly, he's running 160 companies. Um, every six to eight weeks, he's doing Reawaken America tours. Every six to eight weeks, he's also doing business conferences where 200 people show up, and he teaches people a 13-step proven system that he's done and worked with billionaires, helping them grow their companies. Um, so he's, I've seen guys from startups go from startup to being multimillionaires, um, teaching people how to get time freedom and financial freedom through the system critical thinking, document creation, um, making it, putting it into, uh, or organizing everything in their head to building into a, a franchisable, scalable business. Like one of his businesses has like 500 franchises. That's just one of the companies or brands that he works with. So amazing guy, Elon Musk kind, kind of like smart guy. Um, he kind of comes off sometimes as socially awkward, but he's so brilliant and he's taught me so much. When I say that, like, like Clay is like, he doesn't care what people think when you're talking to him. He cares about where you're going in your life and where he can get you to go. Um, and that's what I like most about him. He's like a, a good coach. A coach isn't just making you feel good all the time. A coach is actually helping you get to the best you. And Clay has been an amazing business coach. Through the course of that, we became friends. Um, my, I was really most impressed with him is when I was shadowing him one time. Um, we went into a business deal and listened to it. I, I got to shadow and listen to it. And when we walked out, I knew that he could make millions on the deal. And they were super excited about working with him. And he told me, he's like, I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to turn it down. Um, because he knew it was going to harm the common good of people in the long run. And uh, the guy's integrity um, just really wowed me. Uh, it brought tears to my eyes to see that this guy, his, he doesn't, his highest desire was to do what's right. And um, uh, anyways, just, just, just an amazing man. So anyways, impacted me a lot. Um, he's helped navigate. Anytime I've got nervous or worried about uh, how to run the company or uh, you know, 
navigating competition and 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 an economy that's like i remember we got closed down for three months he helped us navigate on how to stay open how to how to get back open how to um, uh, just survive through all the covid shutdowns lockdowns i'm rachel with tip top canine and we just want to give a huge thank you to clay and vanessa clark Hey guys, I'm Ryan with Tip Top Canine. Just want to say a big thank you to Thrive 15. Thank you to Make Your Life Epic. We love you guys, we appreciate you, and really just appreciate how far you've taken us. This is our old house, right? This is where we used to live a few years ago. This is our old neighborhood. See, it's uh, nice, right? So this is my old van and our old school marketing, and this is our old team. And by team, I mean it's me and another guy. This is our new house with our new neighborhood. This is our new van with our new marketing. And this is our new team. We went from four to 14 and I took this beautiful photo. We worked with several different business coaches in the past and they were all about helping Ryan sell better and um, just teaching sales, which is awesome, but Ryan is a really great salesman. So we didn't need that. We needed somebody to help us get everything that was in his head out into systems, into manuals and scripts and actually build a team. So now that we have systems in place, we've gone from one to 10 locations in only a year. In October 2016, we grew us 13 grand for the whole month. Uh, right now, it's 2018, the month of October. It's only the 22nd. We've already grossed a little over 50 grand for the whole month, and we still have time to go. We're just thankful for you, thankful for Thrive and your mentorship, and we're really thankful that you guys have helped us to grow a business that we run now instead of the business running us. Just thank you, thank you, thank you times a thousand. The Thrive Time Show two-day interactive business workshops are the world's highest rated and most reviewed business workshops because we teach you what you need to know to grow. You can learn the proven 13-point uh, business systems that Dr. Zellner and I have used over and over to start and grow successful companies. I mean, we get into the specifics, the specific steps on what you need to do to optimize your website. We're going to teach you how to fix your conversion rate. Uh, we're going to teach you how to do a social media marketing campaign that works. How do you raise capital? How do you get a small business loan? We teach you everything you need to know here during a two-day, 15-hour workshop. It's all here for you. You work every day in your business, but for two days you can escape and work on your business and build these proven systems so now you can have a successful company that will produce both the time freedom and the financial freedom that you deserve. You're going to leave energized, motivated, but you're also going to leave empowered. The reason why I've built these workshops is because as an entrepreneur, I always wish that I had this. And because there wasn't anything like this, I would go to these motivational seminars, no money down, real estate, Ponzi scheme, get motivated seminars, and they would never teach me anything. It was like you went there and you paid for the, the big chocolate Easter bunny, but inside of it, it was a hollow nothingness. And I wanted the knowledge, and they're like, oh, but we'll teach you the knowledge after our next workshop. And the great thing is we, we have nothing to upsell. At every workshop, we teach you what you need to know. There's no one in the back of the room trying to sell you some next big uh, get rich quick, walk on hot coals uh, product. It's literally, we teach you the brass tacks, the specific stuff that you need to know to learn how to start and grow a business. And I encourage you to not believe what I'm saying, and I want you to Google uh, the Z66 auto auction. I want you to Google elephant in the room. Look at Robert Zellner and Associates. Look them up and say, are they successful because they're geniuses or are they successful because they have a proven system? When you do that research, you will discover that the same systems that we use in our own business can be used in your business. Come to Tulsa, book a ticket, and I guarantee you it's going to be the best business workshop ever and we'll even give you your money back if you don't love it. We've built this facility for you and we're excited to see you. And now you may be thinking, what does it actually cost to attend an in-person two-day interactive Thrive Time Show business workshop? Well, good news. The tickets are $250 or whatever price that you can afford. What? Yes, they're $250 or whatever price you can afford. I grew up without money, and I know what it's like to live without money. So if you're out there today and you want to attend our in-person two-day interactive business workshop, all you got to do is go to thrivetimeshow.com to request those tickets. And if you can't afford $250, we have scholarship pricing available to make it affordable for you.